I was somewhere between 8 and 10 when we first got midnight. We adopted her from an old lady who had a goat farm outside of town. The woman had given us one of her goat kids due to her having an aggressive chihuahua that constantly attacked the poor thing. I don't remember what the goat's original name was, but it was difficult to pronounce so we changed it to Midnight due to her all black fur. Midnight was a precious little thing. She was very social and adjusted to her new home surprisingly well. Dad built a fence surrounding our yard so she would have a wide space to run around in and a little wooden stable where she could sleep for the night. She grew really fast and reached her full adult size with a full set of horns in just a few months. As an only child, it was nice to have a playmate at home whenever I wasn't at school. Less than a year after we adopted her, we noticed her abdomen had swollen. Dad felt her side and he said he could feel movement inside. There was no way around it. She was pregnant, but we had no idea how it happened. There were no other goats in the area, at least not to our knowledge. Regardless, we knew we had to prepare for the inevitable birth of Midnight's kid. We made sure her hay bed was nice and comfy, and she had plenty of food and water for when the big day came. One morning when I went in to check in on her, I saw her laying down on her hay bed, her abdomen back to its normal size. That's strange, I thought. Dad said Midnight wouldn't give birth for at least another month. I looked down at her side, expecting to see a baby goat or two sucking on her nipples. Instead, I saw I don't know what. It looked like a small furry ball, about the size of a softball with black and white coloration like a cow. No limbs, no eyes, no mouth, and no other facial features I could make out. In hindsight, it sort of looked like a tribble from Star Trek, though I wasn't too familiar with Star Trek at the time. I ran into the house to tell mom and dad about what I had seen. I stumbled on my words and they were understandably confused, but dad agreed to come out and take a look. Upon carefully examining the furry orb laying at midnight's side, dad sighed. Looks like a dud, he said. The kid didn't develop properly, and her body rejected it. As we went in to tell mom, I couldn't help but feel sad for midnight. Mom was sad too, but she assured me that failed births are a completely normal thing in all animals, including humans. The three of us agreed to bury what was left of midnight's kid. Dad grabbed a shovel. I grabbed a plastic bag and mom put on a pair of gloves. Dad started to dig a hole as me and mom walked over to Midnight's stable to grab the thing. Mom picked it up with both of her gloved hands and I held the bag open. Just as mom was about to drop it in, she stopped. No, she said quietly. This isn't right. What I said. Dad walked over to see what the matter was. It's alive, mom said. She held the orb out for us to feel. She was right. There was a very distinct heartbeat inside the orb, and we could feel it softly breathing. But how Dad asked, just as confused as Mom. We were interrupted by the sound of midnight bleeding. We turned to see she had gotten up from her hay bed and was walking over to us, bleeding with a pleading expression, as if politely asking us to give her baby if you could call it that back. We didn't know what to do, so Mom calmly placed the orb back on the ground. Midnight picked it up in her mouth and carried it back to her hay bed, placing it down in the center and curling up on her side. Days went by, and Midnight never left her stable. She didn't eat or drink, she just lay there in place with that orb by her side. At the same time, her health didn't seem to be deteriorating. She wasn't losing any weight or showing any obvious signs of sickness despite her inactive nature. One day, as my parents were discussing possibly calling a vet to see what was up with Midnight and her baby, they told me to go outside and check on her, so I did so. What I saw upon peeking in the stable caused me to nearly choke on my breath. I blinked a few times to make sure I wasn't just seeing things. The orb had grown. It was now about the size of a beach ball. This time I could see its surface expanding and retracting as it breathed. I ran in to tell my parents, and they came rushing out to see. Upon seeing how big the thing had gotten, Dad went to grab a big stick which he used to poke the thing a few times. It responded with a low trilling sound. Dad then used the stick to flip the thing over, revealing its underside. The sight caused both me and mom to cry out in shock. On the orb's underside was a slimy pink mouth with sharp yellow dog-like teeth that opened and closed, making a gross sucking and slurping sound as drool dripped onto the hay bed below. Dad rapidly turned to mom, 
his eyes wide with terror. Honey, get the lighter, he shouted. Grab the lighter and light the fire pit. Now. Mom obeyed his orders, rushing inside to find the lighter. As she did that, Dad turned back to the thing and poked it with the stick again. The thing hissed as it sank its teeth onto the end of the stick and held on tightly. Less than a minute later, Mom ran out with a lighter in one hand and a piece of paper in the other. She threw the paper into the fire pit and lit it on fire. Dad swung the stick around with the furry thing on the other end and stuck it into the fire. The thing let out a loud shrill hiss as it was engulfed in flames. The resulting smell was so bad I had to cover my face with my shirt. After a couple minutes it had completely dissolved. All that was left of it upon extinguishing the fire were a few teeth at the bottom of the pit. After we took a minute to calm down from the shock, I realized we were so caught up in getting rid of her cursed offspring that we forgot to check up on midnight. I ran back to the stable and peeked inside. What I saw made my heart sink. Midnight lay completely flat against her hay bed. When I say flat, I mean it literally. She looked like a deflated basketball. Mom. Dad, I shouted in distress. They rushed over and peeked inside before Dad reached in and pulled what was left of Midnight out of the stable. She was pretty much just empty, floppy skin at this point. No bones, no muscles, no organs. Mom then peeked inside the stable one more time. Oh my God, she cried out, pointing inside. Another one. On me and Dad turned to the entrance of the stable. Sure enough, a small furry orb, just like the first one, sat in the middle of the hay bed where Midnight's body had been. This orb was light orange-brown with black spots. Dad then bent over and began to sweep the hay aside, and we gradually saw more and more of these furry orbs buried beneath the hay. There was at least a dozen in there. They varied in color and pattern, with varying shades and mixes of black, white, gray, and brown. Dad then told us to stay put and not touch the orbs, before running back inside and coming back out wearing gloves and carrying a black garbage bag. He grabbed every single orb in the stable he could find, shoving them into the bag until it was full. Then he carried the breathing bag to the front driveway, throwing it in the back of his pickup truck as he told us about his plan to throw it in the nearby lake and hopefully drown the creatures inside. After Dad came back, we double-checked the stable to make sure there was not a single orb left. Then we held a little funeral for midnight as we buried the empty flat skin that was left of her. It's been 20 years since. I still don't know what exactly happened to our beloved goat, or what those things she gave birth to were. We rarely talk about it nowadays, but it sticks in my mind every day. My parents recently adopted another goat, this time named Pepper. I was understandably quite uncomfortable with this decision, but Mom assured me it wouldn't be a repeat of what happened with Midnight. At least that's what she claimed at first. But just this morning, she called to tell me that Pepper was pregnant. Pepper is a male goat 